Web of Interbeing Project, take one. Look like a web to you? Isn't that cool? That is a blown up picture of a mycelium network. Fungi, okay? It's everywhere in the forest. And when I was given this project, um, I didn't immediately think of this. I immediately thought about making a map and plugging in all the trees and, and the beings and the mammals and insects and uh, reptiles, everything I, I, I encounter as I sit or walk through nature. And I came across a book and it, and, and it just blew my mind. And so I decided to make this the basis because this truly is a web. Everything, everything you see behind me, everything is connected underground by this. This is just as a classic and there are a lot of studies done. This is how trees talk to one another. This is the best photo I can give you of what many scientists are calling the wood wide web. It's awesome, isn't it? So, um, that's what we're gonna do. And when we think of web, we think of connections because everything's connected in here. Trees and plants share, share food, they, they, their energies, they, they communicate through this web right here, just like this, through these channels. It's more complicated. I'm sure I'm not going to get into it in this video. That's not what it's about. But this is about connecting and my connection to what I'm, what's behind me here. And I'm going to show you some of my, my favorite places um, in this video and, um, and kind of what they mean to me and how I experienced them in these past, not only this past six months, but in the past 12 months. Um, since I really decided to do this. So, um, thanks for being with me. And let's do it the right. So, this is the bowl. I'm going to scan the best I can here. You see it's covered with this running cedar. It's an evergreen. It's like a carpet. When I first came here, so when I'm looking at this property, long story short, I'm always looking for a place like this. Um, the house was a 60s rancher. It would need a lot of work and I'd bypass it. I went right to the land. When I first snuck up on this land and I walked up in this bowl, my heart fluttered. I kid you not. It was the same fluttering you get when you fall in love. I was just between the, the cedar, which I didn't even know the name of it at the time, and the spacing of these trees. See, that cedar helps keep brush and stuff down. So what we get is just this beautiful, <laughs> this, just this gorgeous little forest with all this space between the trees, and it's magical. I do my POP here. I sit right down here, and it's almost a natural amphitheater where people can sit amongst the trees, on the carpet, and begin P.O.P. It really is, it's special. This whole thing is formed by this spring over here. Probably thousands of years. This spring, this natural spring, just, just forming this bowl. And it's, what's other, what else is unique about this bowl is all the, it's almost as all the species of trees are in this one this one area. It's not just a grove of pine or beech. There's the beech, there's the white pine, there's the cedar, oak, poplar, hickory, and even an eastern hemlock, which are really rare for this part of um, the country. Um, and there's a, there's a grove of them over the hill here, which is protected actually. Um, and I've got a couple of them over here, just on the hill. I'm on my sit spot. I'm actually on top of the hill here, um, elevation about 1,800 feet. Um, you see in the background, that's Carter's Mountain. That's the highest point in this area of Central Virginia. I mean, this area, like immediate area. Um, it stands at about 2,400 feet. So, um, and I'm about 30 miles um, east of the Appalachian Trail, and that you know, you're familiar with that. So. Um, goes to the Appalachian Mountains. And where I sit right now is we call the Piedmont region, which is more or less the foothills. You get some of these mountains popping out like Carter's here, Dudley in front of me. And I'm kind of on a little baby mountain right now. And you see the rocks here, but I'm at the top. This is pretty cool. 
I'm on top of a mountain. <laughs> um, these elevations are nothing to brag about. It's not Kilimanjaro. But um, these mountains are ancient. The Appalachian Mountains. You know that one time they were attached to the same range as um, the one in Morocco? Also attached to the same Ozark range in Arkansas. That's a lot closer. That's almost more like, that, that makes more sense. But the way tectronic plates go, many, many million years ago, they split off. So really, just if this tectronic plate was a little longer, we might be doing this show on the other side of the Atlantic. Fascinating, huh? Native Americans say um, rocks hold the wisdom of the earth. And it makes me wonder about these guys who are this outcrop here on the top here, what they know and what they've seen. Of course, here in the east, we have so much more vegetation. Um, so these outcrops are rare in it, in it. And so kind of special when you come upon one. It's like, oh, wow. Um, probably one of the reasons um, I find it comfortable to sit up here and ponder. But if I think about um, on our quest for the most valuable being, we've got some candidates here. Here's one. Look here, right behind me here, this light green. Lichen is what it's called. Did you know lichen represents six to eight percent of the whole Earth's surface? I didn't know that. And even more importantly, it absorbs as much carbon dioxide as all these trees growing here. So it's whew, really important. But also, just for that relief, this, this winter, as I've slowed down and been on these walks, I've so attracted to the colors of winter. We think of spring and summer and you know, fall as the color seasons, and many people find winter to just be dormant and gray. But if you look closely, and look really closely at the greens and the yellows and even the white hues. It's amazing, it's incredible. So um, also as I'm looking down, uh, um, many of the base of trees have mosses. Again, there are 12,000 species of moss on this earth. That's a lot of different moss, you know? So that's the most valuable being, right? <laughs> um, I have to look up here because I do have a vantage point and I can think of the white-tailed deer off the nestles scattering about. Apiliated woodpeckers, this is a good spot to see them, just with the vantage. I can hear the crows right now flying. I can see the vultures up in the air. Hey, you see behind me? You see right there? That's a, um, that's a beaver dam. You may have seen this. And I'm standing in the overflow, which is just muck. But I don't know if you can hear, but the peepers are out right now. And they hear me. <laughs> and they just quiet it down. So I'm gonna sneak over there without talking. And I'm going to see if I can get them to, to start singing again, because it's mating season here in Virginia. Can you hear that? Peepers are breeding. Um, some wetlands down here. Really important connection to everything here. And they love this, so let's sneak up up. Let's see if we can get close. See that? <laughs> they just, they pipe down. I'm disturbing them. Makes you think about it, right? I mean, I'm just on the bike, got off, slowly creeping through the woods. And they're all kind of like, oof, stop what we're doing. No more, no more singing. You kind of hear them, but it's not nearly as loud. Imagine disruption when bulldozers and things like that start coming in the woods and stuff in forests. Wow, it's just a little, just me quietly marching through here. It's really awesome. This waterfall. Niagara's got nothing on this, huh? 
beautiful. If I can just stare at it, it's more like a, it's, it's a, somewhere between a cross of a fountain and a modern bathtub of wine. And a very nice house. It's amazing how just cascading down and the sound. It's kind of hard to do this video, quite frankly. But it does make me think of life. I mean, you know, we, we talk about most valuable beings. It's kind of hard to not mention water. We're made of, our, body, our bodies are 60% water. We, of course, can't live without it. Neither can any of the life around here. But what's cool is the water itself is a molecule. And we're, t we're, we're always, and, and all, all these beings, as well as us, are constantly taking it in and, 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 and letting it out. Therefore, it's being recycled, not, not just amongst us, but amongst all the beings here. The Earth as well. It's fascinating. When I look at this, sometimes I'm thinking, it's like seeing an old friend. <laughs> or I wonder how many beings are, are cascading over this rock at some point. Or, or at least the parts of them, right? So, when I think of connection and all the beings here in the forest, and how to tell the story of connection. I like to think of the story of the wolves of Yellowstone. Um, by the 1920s, ranchers who had settled in and around the areas near Yellowstone were having problems with the wolves. They were killing their livestock. So they basically sought out to, and with the government's blessing, to eliminate them, get rid of them. And that they did. The wolf population went to nearly zero so with the wolves gone, their man prey, the elk, exploded. The population exploded. What's the harm, right? More elk, less wolves. So the elk, knowing in normal times, in natural times, feed at a certain place at a certain time. Why? Because they know they have to watch their backs. The wolves are around, okay? They can't just go willy-nilly walking through everywhere, eating whatever they want. Well, with the wolves gone, that's exactly what they did. And did they do it, okay? So they began infringing on, on other people, on the other beings' food supplies. They were eating the berry bushes that the grizzlies were relying on. They went down to, to, uh, to uh, mid-mountain mid, mid areas where the small mammals would graze on certain types of grass. They did that too. They even went down, this is one of the most destructive things, they went down to the stream beds and ate all the tender grasses around the streams. They were eating the willows near the streams that the beavers liked. So with all this overeating, the, the, the erosion was accelerated along the river and even up into the banks. This really affected the rivers of Yellowstone. The beavers couldn't, couldn't, have their way of life. They couldn't make the dams like they wanted to, allowing them to be uh, little dams like we talked about earlier in the video. The fish spawning practices were disturbed, and that was affecting also the grizzlies as well. Everybody was affected, but the elk, they were run, they were gone rickshaw. They did this happen for 50 to 75 years. Serious damage done to the eco, ecological area until they reintroduced the wolves. So every being has its place. It has its place because it's taken millions and millions of years to get it to this place. I like to think that it's our place to not only love and respect nature, but to honor its existence in its natural state. Thank you for being a part of my web of intervening.
成。